can't afford to live on the $25 a week pension she would get even if she wanted to. In other states, the pension is less. Jill works as a court reporter on the Melbourne Herald. Her daughter, Sarah, is four. Her main criticism is that there aren't enough creches and that many are too expensive. She considers herself lucky to pay $10 a week for a creche to look after her child. Another single mother, Linda Stevens, works as a computer programmer. She has a five-year-old daughter, Melinda. It seems incredible now that when five years ago I was speaking to the owners at the hospital, they, um, you know, took a very aggressive and, and uh, anti-attitude and uh, told me that my child would grow up in the gutter and that I'd be forced to become a prostitute to support her, etc. And I was very hurt at the time. And, um, you know, I, I feel it's... Uh, I, I feel a great sense of pride that this hasn't happened, that I've managed to survive um, without these events taking place. These women are among 200 members of a newly formed single mothers group in Melbourne, which offers practical assistance and advice to unwed mothers. They want legal and social equality for their children, and the stigma of illegitimacy removed. President of the group, Rosemary Carley. Well, I think the word illegitimate itself is very painful to all single mothers. I think the legal stigma of illegitimacy is an affront to humanity. Uh, illegitimacy is a medieval concept and there can be no justification for it in a just society which is where the law is supposed to protect and not punish the innocent. Well, I, I think that, society, that we're in the position um, where society isn't prepared to make a law against sex outside wedlock for various reasons. <laughs> But they say, but I think people still feel, or perhaps they felt when these laws were being passed, which is probably in many cases 50 and sometimes hundreds of years ago, they felt somebody would be punished. So they said, right, we'll punish the children. I think there is prejudice, um, and I think it was this uh, this basic fear of prejudice that made me call myself Mrs. rather than Miss. I didn't have the uh, moral fortitude, the moral fibre to say, um, I am Miss Millthorpe and I, this is my baby. Um, but but uh, I changed my name and I, I call myself Mrs. because then I don't have to explain to my shopkeeper, to the, to the people down the street, you know. And um, it, it, it is this fear of being looked down on. There, there's, there's things like not being able to get housing because you're a single mother, a supporting mother, and um, uh, things like things like people taking their children away from the creche because they don't want them associating with, a, with an illegitimate child, and this sort of thing that, that, that still exists in minorities only, but it exists and it's very painful if you run up against it. I, I did feel initially a little bit of guilt, um, mainly not, not for the act of having the child, but uh, one feels guilty for the hurt that you inflict upon other people, upon parents and so on. And this is, I think, one of the major things. You don't, uh, and this worries you more at the time than the actual um, problem of having a child. The main uh, worry is having upset the people around you. But in the eyes of society or the church, I mean, you have committed an immoral act. Now, do you think you should be penalised well, for this? Church. Well, church. Well, in many different church. I don't believe we have really in, in the Christian religion committed any actual sin. At all. I'm not a theologian, but I... Christ was conceived out of wedlock. We, we have committed a, a crime, I suppose you could call it, against the current moral codes uh, of our conventional, the conventional um, society's um, conventional codes that it's constructed for itself. Um, but as far as committing any sort of religious sin is concerned, I don't believe we have. I think most of the Protestant churches now are coming to say that sex out of wedlock isn't always evil. Well, I think to a large extent single mothers um, have been in the past, probably not so much now, but there's a sort of brood cow for the adoptive parents. You know, uh, we, we're the producer of, a, of, a, of an article that's in demand. And I think it's high time that this was stopped, that we were thought, uh, that we was, that people started to think about us as people in our own rights, you know, with our, with our own needs to keep the baby. And, and not to be treated as you know as a as a breeding machine. It's just it just isn't moral. And I think society has been immoral in the past for using us in this way.